Hello everyone, welcome to Floss Tube number 16. Yes, I was just I was just gonna do like Steph does and just to keep sketch, stitching like five plus five plus two plus one plus one plus two and that's 16. Yeah, but I'm not gonna start that because you know, uh, I think they're like on 157 episodes and when she starts adding all the numbers, I'm like, okay, you lost me. <laughs> so it's July, Saturday, the 18th. And it is the Saturday before going back to work. So I'm really, uh, I'm not really feeling it. Um, I've been enjoying my vacation or my time off work so much. Um, the weather has been just really up my alley. It's been like some days has been very hot and then some days has been quite cold and we've had quite a lot of rain and then we have had quite a lot of days where it's just, you know, something in between. So it's been really nice and uh, we decided to to stay home because of the yeah the situation uh, so um, I have had so much time for stitching and so much time for floss tube and making future <laughs> stitching plants you know and putting in some orders and stuff so yeah it's been a great holiday but now like real life is uh, coming and it's not that I don't like to work. I love to work and I'm looking forward to get back to work in that way. But it is the pressure of uh, being in the leader position and wanting to do my very best and never do wrong because I hate to do wrong, which is like, just tearing my guts out. I have a big knot in my stomach. I have like pressure. I'm sorry for hitting the microphone pressure on my chest. And I feel just like, you know, rolling over playing dead. So we'll see how everything goes. Um, so I've been actually which I, I usually don't plan how I'm going to do the episodes. Uh, I, I guess I've learned I'm that kind of per person. I just go with the flow and it is a bit stupid to do that because uh, one, once I finish recording, sometimes I remember that I've forgotten some things. So I try to plan out a little bit of, things I wanted to talk about and because I don't have that much to show you today so it's um, a bit boring actually but we have one exciting thing and that's announcing the winner of the giveaway uh, but I will keep those uh, fun things at the end or should we just go right ahead I mean, I jumped, uh, most people, I guess, when they do their giveaway, they talk about the giveaway and then the next episode they announce the winner. But since I'm a very small channel and I don't get that many comments, I wanted to give everyone like an extra chance. So I um, decided to announce it in this number 16. So yeah, I guess we'll just, um, just, announce the winner. So I've recorded the drawing and how I went about it. So I will show you that recording right now. Okay then. Um, let's see. We are going to draw the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway. 
um, this is the video and the comments of the video. I have 58 ones, but I think most a lot of them are answers, my answers to your comments. So I'm copying that link to that movie or to the floss tube. And then we have the common picker. I'm adding the link and then filter duplicate us users. I'm doing that. And then I wanted you guys to, to write hate, right? So that's what I want. Now I'll get the YouTube comments. I have 34 unique commenters, so you have a big chance of winning here. So let's start the raffle and pick a random winner. And the winner is Iduna Aesir. And her comment is, I'm working on my first hate. I like stitching on it as I watch your videos. I'm sorry you feel that way about your pattern, and I hope you feel better about it when you restart it. So, now I will go and check if Iduna has filled out the form and if she is subscribing to my channel. Yeah, so congrats, Idun. Eris, I do Eris. I'm I'm totally killing that name. I'm really really sorry, but as I mentioned, I was gonna check if she's a subscriber, and if she has filled out the form, and she has filled out the form, and she's a subscriber. So, all thumbs up. Congratulations. Uh, I will leave a comment on your comment, uh, and I I will email you. Uh, to the email address that you left in the form. So that's really awesome. I'm really looking forward to see which heaven and earth design pattern you are going to choose. So um, yeah, that's, that's great. I was so nervous uh, when I was gonna, you know, um, do the video and the comment picker and everything because I've never done anything like that. So I was very nervous and I was so excited to see who it was going to be. I think there were like 34 uh, unique comments. So that was really great. I'm looking forward to the next um, giveaway or random act of kindness. I, I prefer that word or a term. Uh, so uh, yeah, I have a feeling I will, if, you know, come up with something in the future. And I'm almost already up at 600 subscribers. So everyone, thank you very much. And hello, all new ones. And hello, all my oldies. <laughs> so yeah, so that was the giveaway. Um, now let's talk about whips. I have three uh, whips for the last week. I was supposed to have four, but uh, on Monday when I was supposed to go home to my mom and uh, when I'm at my mom's place, uh, I've been stitching on my Enchanted Forest by the Owl Embroidery, Owl Forest Embroidery Company. Uh, but <clears throat> Sunday evening, me and my husband, we started, you know, just... Uh, cleaning out, sorting out, you know, our living room and the balcony. Uh, so we, we had like a huge pile in the living room with things we were going to throw away. And, you know, we just, Monday, we just drove back and forth, back and forth to the, what you call it, the, the recycle station, uh, just, you know, uh, throwing things and 
putting things where um, it can be reused. Um, and we did that for like two more days. So I lost two days of stitching, but it was really nice to just clean out everything. And I got to organize my stitching and my, uh, my uh, watercolors and uh, color pencils and all my art stuff. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and I got to go through all my heaven and earth um, whips once again and kind of th think through which are the um, designs that I really want to work on and how am I going to go about it because I think I have like 19, 18 or 19 that I'm interested in right now plus I have a few which I feel like I'm never going to start them I'm never going to continue and then I know myself and I know that there will be more <laughs> new ones and that's fine but yeah so um, I organized this kind of like a wheel uh, where I entered all the heaven and earth designs that I want to work on and for the moment, I made up my mind that I'm going to spin, spin the wheel once a week, like when I do the floss tubes, which I hope I will stick to doing once a week. And I will stitch on that project for that week. But I also have my Mirabilias and I have other designs coming as well. Uh, uh, like, for example, long dog samplers. I want to get really want to get into those old traditional stitches, stitching, old traditional stitching, stitches, patterns, whatever, where they have a lot of specialty threads and everything. So there's going to get more and I don't know how really I'm going to plan it out. But now I'm like ahead of me. I was going to talk about my whips. So I lost a couple of days because we needed to do some work at home. And we went to Ikea to get my daughter her new furniture. So we were fixing with that. So I have no progress of the Enchanted Forest. However, uh, I think like Sunday I was working on my mini dragon in the morning. Where is he? I think it's this one. I don't think... Think. I think I stopped with this on Sunday. So this is the progress. I'm not sure if I have. I think I, I stitched some more since the last YouTube. I should start with this. These, you know, I should actually start checking out my old episode and see. <laughs> what I've done but I won't have that much time now when I'm going back to work so it won't be any problem so anyway this is it I'm stitching it uh, with um, two threads over one on 25 count I'm 10 stitching it and I'm trying out the diagonal stitching which is uh, pretty nice at least with this pattern um, I'm really enjoying it I love the colors I love the the golden colors um, I just like the combination and that it turns out to look like gold is really nice. So that's pretty nice. And yeah, 25 count and it, it is the easy grid. And I remember someone asking me if I could show them where you start stitching within the grids. And I think I've totally forgot to make a film about that. But uh, yeah, I need to start doing the, the stitch and chats. So I will get to it. So that's what I was working like before we started cleaning out. <clears throat> and then a Swedish, Swedish stitcher it's so nice to find other Swedish stitchers. She's called Stitching Becca. And she left a comment on my YouTube saying that 
um, Lisa, her channel is called Lisa Stitching and Such, gave me a shout out on her floss tube. So first I, I went to check out Becca because she wrote in Swedish, Swedish, so that was really nice. And it was really nice to, yeah, as I said, watch another Swedish uh, cross stitcher. Um, and she sounded just like the Swedish runner, uh, Emilia. Oh, no, I can't remember her name, but it was so nice, very uh, charming. And uh, she told me about this Lisa's channel. So I went over to Lisa's channel and watched her uh, YouTube, Floss Tube. And it was so nice to see all the heaven earth designs. And she talked about the Once Upon a Fairy Tale, which I have here. And uh, I haven't feeling quite good about it, as you all know. But she said some things. Um, and I just, I don't remember exactly what she, she said that made me feel like, you know, just as we say in the hiking community, when you have to go out hike in the rain, the cold, just embrace the suck. Okay. And just continue. And that's how I felt about my Once Upon a Fairy Tale. It's the super sized max color. And I started with the old chart and I've got gotten two new. So the latest one they released. And I was like, it's such a beautiful picture. And Amy Stewart is just so amazing. And she's really interacting with her fans and it's just amazing. So it's like, Linda, embrace the suck, pick it up and do some stitching. So that's what I did. And I'm glad I did. <clears throat> and since what all this, well, most of it, um, I've stitched um, with, you know, the old pattern using Pattern Keeper. So when I loaded it, loaded up, whatever, uploaded the new pattern, all the progress I have already made, I couldn't see that, of course, uh, in Pattern uh, Keeper. So when I looked at the, the fabric, I was like, it was like a, a, a big, it was just chaos. I'm like, what have I stitched? Where should I start? Um, how am I going to mark everything I've stitched? Because I don't know which symbol belongs to what. And I was like, damn, I, I don't know how to do it. So I decided to just go back to what I know best when it comes to heaven and earth. And that is parking and then stitching one grid at a time, a 10 by 10 grid. And so I thought if I do that, and then, you know, I can figure out which uh, symbols in that grid is stitched, I can mark them, and then I know what to stitch. So I, I started doing that, and that is why you can see all these threads hanging. And the progress I did uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I think I, I just stitched two days. Is this line here? Uh, I think it's like a wall and then some books. Um, so, th so that's all I did. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's a slow stitching because it's a lot of, a lot of color changing. Um, but I felt I got a little bit of control of what I was doing and it didn't feel that overwhelming considering it is max colors and what I've uh, I think it was either it was Tracy or it was Lisa who said that uh, there's a tree here and that's like really hell confetti stitching so it didn't feel too bad uh, 
as when I started The Secret Garden uh, by Amy Stewart. It was a super size max color and I was like switching color all the time. There were thousands of threads and I was like, no, I can't do that. So I've been afraid to park a max color, but now I'm trying and it feels quite good. So, but after those two days, I was tired and not overwhelmed, but I felt that, yeah, it's enough with that. And um, I needed some more relaxing stitching. And since you know, I've like found the wonders of Mirabilia. So I wanted to get some stitches in on my portrait portrait of Veronica. And that is so easy stitching comparing <laughs> compared to the Once Upon a Fairy Tale. So, oh, and the Once Upon a Fairy Tale is also stitched on 25 count, the easy grid, and it's stitched one over one full cross with one thread. Yes, one over one. Yep. So this is my Mirabilia. And let's see. Yeah, so this is like the top back of her dress. So I started, I think this is like the middle. So I worked my way up, upwards. So I wanted to stitch her dress downwards. And here is where her arm is coming. And then, you know, her, oh, uh, her torso, whatever. Yeah. But as I said, I was very surprised of how much black there is in uh, the dress but it's very beautiful and it's so easy stitching. So my goal is before I go back to work, I have like today and tomorrow, I want to finish some of this part here because then I can get in some, uh, there's gonna be some beads over here, but I'm not gonna bead it. Uh, but there are some back stitches and uh, I wanted to try that out and see how it looks. And this is stitched on the fabric that the pattern is called for. It's like a lime green something. It's a, it's a, it looks a bit gray, but it's a little bit of a, a green in it. And it's linen and it's 32 count and it's working out just fine. So that's that. Those are the three whips that I have been working on. So that's, uh, that's all, but I've been a little bit more busy and yeah. It's very important to enjoy the stitching. Um, you shouldn't force yourself through something that you hate. So I don't hate this. I'm, I'm going to love this. I will teach myself to love it again. But I have so many other heaven and earths that I love. Yes, and that's why I'm really excited about the wheel that I'm going to spin. <clears throat> because uh, I'm thinking if I get to spin that wheel every week, and there's 52 weeks of the year. So that means I can work on 52 different heaven and earth. You know, I'm thinking if you just stitch a little bit on that whip once a week, I mean, you won't get bored or tired. And even if you have something like this one um, and you feel like oh, this is tough, you know, you know that it's just that one week. So, and then you have some of the heaven and earths that are so easy, like my softest steel. I haven't worked on her, <clears throat> but you know, like the background stitching on this is easy. Yeah. So 
what should we do now? Yeah, but let's talk about plants a little bit. Since I mentioned the wheel, the heaven and earth wheel. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to do like, for example, next week. Uh, I don't know how busy I'm going to be at work uh, Wednesday. Uh, that's like three days ago when I went into uh, the mail at work. I had over 200 unanswered emails. <laughs> and I think it's getting close to 300 now. So, and that's just the mail. Then we have to do other stuff as well. So, I don't know how busy I'm going to be. I don't know how stressed I'm going to be when I get home. And when I get home, if I get home. <laughs> so, I don't know how much stitching time I will get. So, I don't know if I'm going to like Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. No, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to work on Mira. Tuesday and Thursday, I'm going to work on something, you know, different. Like, I have so many other fun shards so i want to get my hands on and then the weekends i work on heaven and earth i don't know we'll see but i think that we are going to spin that wheel right now because i can't wait i want to know what i'm going to work on the coming week so i'll see you in a bit okay so my wheel is over here Spin the wheel, random picker. And this is my heaven and earth wheel. So you can see I have quite a few. Oh, this is so exciting. So now I'm gonna spin. Drum roll. Oh, Midnight Watcher. All right. So now we all know it is the Midnight Watcher I'm going to stitch the upcoming week and I have it here. Um, I actually have a thread pack and I think it's a thread pack from Donna who has the Crafty Kitten. I'm not sure but once she did uh, made some thread packs. So it's a uh, 25 count. It is the magic guide. So there is a uh, 20 by, it's a 20 by 20 grid, but um, the fabric is quite nice and soft. So I really enjoy it. I stitched my two spanglers on uh, the magic guide. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, I've already stitched one page of the Midnight Watcher. And I remember starting in the middle. So this is going to be This is going to be quite interesting. There is a lot of background color, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go which way should I go? Maybe I should go upwards so we can start getting some more of her face. Yes. So I will probably start stitching on that tomorrow when it's Sunday. Because I wanted to stitch a little bit more on my mirror. I think this that I think the wheel is good because otherwise I would I don't think I would ever, you know get myself to continue stitching on that. <clears throat> awesome. So that's the plan. And um, I'm quick. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've been um, parking that one and I'm not sure if I should like go page by page in, in some way for example my softest steel I have seen how it can turn out when you 
switch from Q snaps to a scroll frame and the tension is different all the time and I did get a page line and um, yeah it is annoying it's sad but I've said it so many times I, I, I wonder if I will ever finish a heaven and earth design ever again at least not any of the big ones um, so I'm not sure if the diagonal stitching really is the, the way to go it should be you know um, maybe I should try I could try the diagonal stitching but with 20 uh, grid lines yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see so that's anyway that's fun um, uh, let's uh, jump ahead to haul um, I it's, it's so boring really I have so much haul coming and I can't wait you know seriously I can't wait to get all the things because I want to start all the things uh, so last week I think I had quite a lot of haul and you know everything was going so fast because I didn't want the video to be too long which it actually kind of got pretty long and then this week I have t almost nothing to show you I ordered some plastic bobbins I ordered five packages and there's like 28 in each packet and my thought with that was to use it for my floss body which is also on its way uh, with uh, I've ordered a floss body which holds 90 colors which is going to be for my fantastic voyage which I I really want to start it but I don't want to start it until I have the floss body because I want the threads to be a bit in order uh, otherwise you know I think I have five storage boxes that I, and I need to go through them all all the time and it's just boring and uh, watching a tutorial or a like a closer look to the floss bodies um, I don't remember who it was but she mentioned that when you pull the paper bobbin up and down it kind of breaks so I was thinking I will start um, switching them out for plastic bobbins so I ordered that and I don't need to show that because we all know how a plastic bobbin looks like and then I got <clears throat> I, I talked about this in my last video handwork maniac I love her floss tube I love her floss tube she is amazing she is so talented and she's so calm and nice to listen to I love her love 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 and she gave a very nice kind of tutorial about sulky threads and how she picked out the sulky thread to her pandemic by long dog samplers which I think all of us know and I also want to start the pandemic and it's not that I need to finish it or anything I just want to start it this year where we have the chaos and I had a big piece of 32 count which I wanted to stitch that on but when I started measuring, it would only give me like two inches around. And I think that was a little bit too little. So I ordered some new fabric and that's what I got because I ordered it from a shop here in Sweden. So it just took a couple of days and it's here. So it's... Uh, a Murano even weave white so that that's all that I've got and the store who has uh, who I ordered from is the one who's hosting the retreat which were supposed to be in April but now it's postponed to September I think it is and Becca if you're watching this I hope you're going to the retreat because that would be just awesome to to meet there you know and I'm really looking forward to to meet all these people who are just into cross-stitching 
that's uh, oh it's gonna be so much fun and i'm gonna be so nervous because i'm not a social person and i'm the kind of person who i get anxiety anxiety in those situations because i don't know how to act and i don't know what to talk about and how to eat and how to sit you know it's just too much but i'm like i really want to meet people who has the same interest as me i really want to be a part of it so i need to you know get myself together <laughs> So, Beck, I hope you're going. It would be nice to meet you there. Um, oh, why? Oh, because I ordered the, the fabric from the store who hosts this, this stitch retreat. Yeah, I had to back, you know, go back. What was I talking about? So, I ordered that fabric and Handwork Maniac uh, showed about this so showed the sulky thread and I found a place in Germany who has the thread so I ordered thread for my pandemic and it's gonna turn out like I didn't expect at all or didn't plan at all because I was thinking you know hand dyed weave and hand dyed threads and everything and all of a sudden I'm like no I think what she's showing there is gonna look pretty damn nice because the white weave and the black threads like Tracy is doing and the pattern is showing is so nice I mean the contrast can't be any better so it's gonna be like white and then I have red brick sulky thread and I've ordered two different reds that will I will try to highlight some stuff I hope in the pattern so I'm really looking forward to get the supplies so I can get a little start and I think most of them of you guys are starting starting in the top left corner but I'm like I think I'm gonna start in the middle I'm not sure so that's all the haul I have very boring very boring but um, um Yes, I have some orders. I'm still waiting for um, the order from Traditional Stitches to be shipped so I, I can pay for it and they can ship it because there is a lot of fun stuff there. And how did I slip into traditional stitching? I'm not sure, but it's one of the floss tubes I've watched and um, I ended up on Nicola Parkman's floss tube. She is, I guess, the owner of Hands Across the Sea samplers. I'm out of words. There are some samplers that has caught my eye and also like the story behind the sampler and where the original sampler, you know, is coming from and how old it is and it's like really a piece of art. And what I find so amazing about it is that I guess almost all of them are made by young girls and how they were formed, you know, that you would have to do some things. Yeah, I don't know. And it's these little girls and there were, there was this, I guess, pressure on them that they had to stitch these samplers and it would be such an honor to also stitch and <clears throat> so the more I look at them and the more I read their stories and the more I listen to Nicola and her enthusiasm 
with these samplers is really contagious and I'm like I'm so enabled and one of them which has been my number one is the Sarah Brasher 18 something now I can't remember 1827 when I saw that being shown I was like I have to do that I have to stitch that sampler but the typical me is like I get scared because I'm like I don't want to mess it up I don't want to ruin it I have never ever stitched anything like it I've never used those silk threads and if I'm going to stitch something that beautiful and that historical I'm going to do what it's called for <laughs> So then I'm thinking, well, then you have to kind of step back and you have to learn how to do these stitches. And so I have picked, since it's my birthday next month, I have ordered a birthday present for myself, of course. So I've ordered one of the small gems and the, the materials for that. And that small gem I chose... Um, I will uh, leave a picture of it here and the name of it because I can't remember that, of course, and I didn't write it down. Um, it's just um, stitch with the cross stitches. There's no specialty threads, no specialty stitches as, at all. Uh, but I have never stitched on four account. I have never used the, the soy dulger threads. So I've ordered that and the great thing about this, I mean, I love traditional stitches, but it's like in Canada, way over there. And I found a place in Europe, an Italian store, and I've ordered from them before and it's very nice. And it's cheaper and there is no taxes and customs and whatever. So that's really nice. So I made an order for my birthday and then I ordered <clears throat> fabric and another pattern for like the next step after using the materials, a higher count weave and the silk threads that I have not known about. Um, the next step is to try a sampler, a hands across the sea sampler with specialty stitches in it. And I watched um, Kitten Stitcher. I think she had some filming from the, the Nashville uh, market. Um, and she uh, interviewed Nicola Parkman. Nicola Parkman. And she said uh, she had released a new sampler where there's, was it a nine year old girl? She's like doing her first sample and sampler. And she said, this is a perfect start for the one who wants to take that next step and get into these traditional samplers. So then I'm, I'm like, well, I want to go that, I, will, I want to do that learning curve. So work with the materials. Then I'm going to start working with an, I guess an easier, sampler with the specialty um, stitches and then if that works out fine then I can jump to the beautiful samplers with all the specialty stitches and threads and whatever so that's like a plan for a lifetime but they are so beautiful and I really want to get into that and I really want to stitch my heaven and earth, so I don't know how we're going to um, mix it all up. But I ordered that sampler. Um, I will just leave pictures and names of the samplers since I can't remember them now. And then I ordered that my favorite Sarah Brasher sampler. It's going to be huge, but it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So that was plans and that's my 
birthday present for myself. So I'm really looking forward to that. And my husband, he asked, so what do you want for your present? Or for your birthday? I'm like, cross-stitch stuff. And he was like, you don't think you have enough? <laughs> you can never have enough. Ever. <laughs> so that's that. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, I'm in the fabric of the month club with crafty kitten and she wrote us an email saying that she's i think she's dying the may fabrics this weekend um so she'll be sending them out after that so i'm really looking forward to that um those uh, fabrics are for uh, hopefully for most of my mirabilias so I'm hoping uh, I will get some nice uh, fabrics from her. Uh, I've signed up for uh, the Fortnite Fabric of the Month Club as well, the neutrals and the ones with color, uh, but it's a waiting list, so I'm not sure if I will be able to enter. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys, you have to go check out um, Tracy's uh, Craft House. That's her, her channel. But uh, this week, Tracy and her daughter had a um, like stitch and chat video. Oh my God, it was so hilarious. It's, you guys, you have to go look at that um, episode. I mean, just go look at Tracy's channel overall. She's such a talent in crafting and her knitting is just wow uh, but i mean we're doing our floss tubes or and our stitching shads and we're i guess many of us are recording when our kids are asleep or when everyone is you know out doing stuff and we're all alone and you know we're you know setting cameras and preparing and everything but there is real life stitching, you know, which we, I guess, we usually don't get on camera. Sometimes, you know, the kids are coming in or the animals are coming in. But seriously, that was like real life being a mom and stitching with our daughter. It was just, Tracy, your patience. <laughs> It's amazing, really. It was such a great video. I'm looking forward to see more of it. Um, yeah, um, so what's more? I think that's all. Yeah, I think that's all. I'm just rambling as usual. Um, so yeah, uh, my plan is to do another floss tube at the end of next week. And hopefully we have a little bit of progress. So it's my Mira and Midnight Watcher. It's going to be, yeah, I'm excited actually. I'm very excited to stitch that. Uh, and I really want to do a stitch and shed. I was supposed to do it this week, but yeah, just the thought of going back to work. I'm like, I just want to go and hide. <laughs> so, but maybe... I can do one uh, soon. Um, yeah, it was uh, nice. It was nice. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments, you know, leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button <laughs> uh, because then I will see you next time. And uh, take care, stay safe, keep your distance. Uh, and for those of you who need to wear a mask, do that. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.